Shalom and welcome once again to the Rashi Nash. I'm Pastor Matt. And I'm Kara. Thank you for joining us once again. This week, we're in a brand new book of the Torah, the book of Bamidbar, or In the Desert. Now, in English, it is called Numbers. Why? Because it starts with a counting of the people. But I like how in Hebrew, it's called Bamidbar, or In the Desert. To me, that makes a lot more sense. The wandering in the desert, that makes a lot more sense than uh, the Numbers. But again, it's because of the counting. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Because in verse 1 of Bamidbar, it says, The Lord spoke to Moses in the Sinai desert, in the tent of meeting, on the first day of the second month, in the second year after the exodus from the land of Egypt, saying, and he tells them, in verse 2, Take a sum of all the congregation of the house of Israel by families following their father's houses, and a head count of every male according to the number of their names. Now, I'm going to talk about two different types of counting. What Rashi says here is, because they were dear to him, because the children of Israel were dear to the Lord, he counted them often. I like that. And I'll tell you why in a moment. When they left Egypt, he counted them. When many fell because of the sin of the golden calf, he counted them to know the number of the survivors. When he came to cause his divine presence to rest among them, he counted them. On the first of Nisan, the Mishkan, the tabernacle was erected. And on the first of ER, he counted them. As parents, and you may not be a parent, but we have three grown children. And when they were small, if we were ever out with them, you know if you're a parent or if you're a teacher or uh, if you're a caregiver of some kind where you we have to keep track of multiple people, you know that you are constantly counting. <laughs> now for us, when we only had one child, it's pretty simple. Is she here or is she not here? When you have two or three, once we had three, it was always sort of trying to keep an eye. We did have one time where we turned around for a second and one of our children, our oldest daughter, had wandered off. And we were in a theme park. There were hundreds of people around. And it was a scary moment for a second because you're always counting. And then when one is missing, that's a big deal. Why? Because they're dear to you. They're your children. Now, thankfully, uh, an employee of the theme park came walking towards us and had our little girl there. And they reassured us by saying, don't worry, sir, we've never lost a child. And I thought that's very reassuring, but we still want to keep an eye on our children. The way that we used to do it in church at uh, church trips or youth group trips, we would do a count off. We would assign every student a number and they would say it out loud. And we would hear the different voices, one, two, three, four. And if we were missing a number, well, we knew we couldn't leave wherever we were. We needed to locate that student. So that is a good counting. That's a counting because you care. It reminded me of some of the things when when a child is first born, one of the first things that we did, I think all parents do this, is count toes and count fingers. We just we just do a little counting. We, we like to do that. When we're children and we have toys, we like to count up our little toys or arrange them. We, when things are dear to us, we like to see them. We, we like to look at them as a group. The same is true with the Lord. The same is true with Moses. The same is true for parents. So this is a time when counting is a, a big deal and it's a positive thing. There's another time in scripture, it also has to do with a, a, a census, when King David is counting up his men and God is angry because he counts them. Why? Because he's looking at those people almost like possessions or weapons, uh, things that he has uh, in his arsenal. When, when you do a, a census or, or when you um, do, for instance, uh, the, the payment for the, the temple or the tabernacle, you do it with money. You don't count people like you do sheep. You don't count people like you do cattle. Everyone gives a half shekel and you count up the coins and that's how you know how many people you have. So that's the, the positive and the negative way. You don't want to count people as if they're things because they are uh, beings made in the image of God, people that God dearly loves. And so we don't want to count them as if they're possessions 
or things or uh, something to boost our ego. Look at how many people I have following me. And we can fall into that temptation of counting up, uh, even on our social media, you know, how many friends do we have? How many people are following? How, how much enjoyment do we get if I make a certain post and I get so many likes or so many thumbs up? Or, sometimes we can get part of our ego from numbers. We have to even admit in congregational work, you know, we, we lead a church. Sometimes it would be very tempting to feel good if we had a lot of people in a service and then to feel a bit down if we didn't have very, very many people in the service. That's when we're looking at people in terms of numbers in a negative way. But God counted the people here because they were dear to him, because he didn't want anyone to be lost. And of course, that reminds us of when we read in the New Testament about the good shepherd, the shepherd who leaves the 99 sheep to find that one lost one and bring it back. That is something that we that's when numbers are good. When there's one missing, when you're at the roller coaster and you look and your child isn't there, that's when it matters. So we need to make sure that we are... Counting our blessings. That That's very good. Counting our blessings. And I, that, I like that. I think our children are blessings and we can, we can count them. And I would imagine that those were blessings to Moses, which is why he counted them so often. Yeah. Well, and so much of a blessing to him that you know as well as I do that when they fell into sin, he even said, Lord, take me instead, you know, blot me out of, of your book, you know, look, save them, forgive them. Um, that's how you know that you really care about someone, that they're not just a number to you, that you count them because you don't even want one lost. Yeah. Um, uh, th there are situations like that that I can think of in my mind where you, you just care so much. You don't even want one, one to be lost. There might be somebody like that in your family. There might be somebody like that in your congregation. We were just having a, a conversation just this last week about sometimes there are people that are difficult for you to deal with, people that might try your patience. They still have as much value as the people that you really enjoy being around and you need to make sure that you are uh, living in such a way that you are showing them grace and mercy even if they try your patience you know why because they're still they're one of the sheep in the flock yeah. they count they matter and you don't want to lose even one so I think that's probably true of not only our children but people in our congregations mm -hmm. people that we work with uh, we don't want to lose even one so maybe it's good for you to count your blessings, count, count your children, count, count your friends, count, count your coworkers, count those people that are in your life that you have an opportunity to make a difference on and count them because they matter to you and, and make sure that they really, really do matter to you, that, that you're not just using people. Maybe that, let them know and maybe let them know. Probably a good idea to, yes, let them know that they mean something to you. And not to, to bring us down, but just to close with this, we never know how much time we have with someone. So make sure that you're letting them know that they are a blessing to you, that you are counting them among your blessings, because sometimes our, our time with folks is short and uh, they need to know now. It's good to tell other people what someone meant to you at their memorial service. But uh, there's a phrase that I've heard lately of it's sometimes good to give people their flowers now. Give them their flowers while they are still living. Don't just say nice things about them at their funeral, but say those things now. Let this be a blessing to you and a lesson to you to, uh, to really cherish those people around you. Count them because you care like the Lord did and like Moses did. We hope this has been a blessing to you. And uh, from our house to yours, we want to wish you God's richest blessings. And uh, we are glad to count you among people that we are helping to lead and teach. You are one of our blessings. 
Thank you for watching and for sharing these videos. Shalom and Kultuf. Cool